Well, good evening, everyone. <coughs> Welcome to me and my shed. Uh, over a month ago, um, one of the demonstrations, uh, a couple of people asked me to uh, show how I go about using my laser machine for engraving. And rather than just show you a piece that it's a machine and you just laser it, I thought I would turn a piece and then we can engrave the lid of it and that would make more or less a better presentation, you know, of a finished piece and how you go about it and stuff. So, well, we'll be cutting this video down a wee bit because it'll probably be too long by the time I finish turning this wee piece of uh, American sherry. Uh, it's four and a half inches wide by three inches deep. And we'll just uh, fix the camera over just so that you can see it. Okay. On slow to start off with, because it is in between centers and I start to stand to the side before and gradually increase the speed and let it run for a second and everything looks fine so we'll carry on and we'll just want to I'll change the camera over to the head overhead camera we just to want to introduce the gouge to it and use your finger on the back of the tool rest just lean and then and, and take gentle cuts. This parting tool, and we're just going to run it straight in. And just slightly roll it into the back of it and put a wee bevel on it. I'm cleaning up the face of that to allow for the the chuck to sit up against. Um, change back to tail stop. There you are. Or maybe front, which will be there. Okay, so I'm just going to run over the face of this and take that, clean that up. Do with a sharp. Right, the next thing you have to determine the size of your lid. I'm going to give myself plenty of room, so I'm going to mark it. And blah, 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 blah. give myself plenty to play with. Just clean the top of that up and straighten the, the lid recess 
for the lid to fit on too. And just giving it a wee bit of a bevel at the bottom here. So when the lid goes on, it goes out nice and snug. Right. That's ready for sanding. So we'll get this. I won't be boring you with the, the sanding process. Just letting you know, I will be starting at uh, 120 and going up to 400. And we uh, we taste the Yorkshire grit. Take any wee fine lines. The last sandpaper left. Yorkshire grit is an abrasive, so. It won't take deep scratches out, but it'll take wee, wee fine, wee fine uh, scratches. And nice piece of cherry is what it is. So we'll set that over there and we'll get our lid on. And this is where your thinking ahead comes in. You've got a chicken point on this, but here and the chuck and stuff. But you're not stuck. If you have a set of cool jaws, you can still mount it, or you can use <coughs> a jam chuck to wedge that piece in. You know, there's all the options you have, so you won't be stuck for mounting them. The thing is here, when you, you're marking your piece out to fit it in, Fit a lid to it. Make it a wee bit small. Don't go uh, the full size of it to start off, because you wanna you wanna finesse it into the piece and you get a nice fit. If you make it too big, then you can't you can't add anything back to it. So remember, only engage in one point. So I am going to engage this point. And watch over here where the, the line goes to determine if it's in the right vicinity. And you can see it matches up. Okay. So we know our, uh, our piece is uh, somewhere there. I'm just running this in an angle towards the center to leave me a wee bit of depth in this for uh, cutting a hole in it, put my wee knob in it for lifting the lid off.
just when I take the steel tail slug away so that doesn't fall off <coughs> before we finish the bottom of it. We can take our lid off. Now, how are we going to hold that, Paul? You're saying to yourself. Well, the simple answer <laughs> is yep, that'll work. So, I could put my cold jaws on to show to do the lid, but seeing it's me, I'll just show you a different way of doing it, and then because not everybody can go out and afford to go out and buy all the different chucks and stuff. Usually when you get to the stage and the, the process, you, you just want to get it finished and uh, you just let your guard down a wee bit and next thing you have a new lid to make. <laughs> There we are, it's on, and it's running nice and true. So, if you take your time, you will get the piece done, and uh, you, you have no problem with it. Right, so. So, it really comes down to, and if you want to be overly sheer that it's not going to come off. Get yourself a bit of masking tape and do the same thing. Run it around the piece. And there's a, an R rolled on. That's back to the pine shop for me. Right, that's it. Need to tidy that up now. And just when you come to the end, we bet don't rush it because. The lathe's going far slower in the centre, so if you force it, it'll turn the timber out. <clears throat> I tell you, there's very little to take off. So just a wee rub over with a taste of wax, and that's that done. And then we'll buff this up, and that's just part of the project done and it'll be over to the laser engraving and we'll show you how I go about setting it up. Well welcome everybody again to part two. We now have the laser ready to go. I'm just going to run you through my setup. This is my box I made. I'll just drop it down. Uh, it's the extraction for the fumes with the smoke 
it's on the head and I can lift the front of it up and lock it in position to load the stuff. I made this box a bigger uh, so that I can, when you're using my uh, rotary system, I can take the, the inside out, out. Also, I have these slide in bases that go up different levels. So, uh, I've got a good range of size I can do on it. So, the idea when you first get this, you need to know the size of your piece. This is our piece, okay? And it's 110 mil. I'm working on 110 millimeters exactly because I want to, to get this inside that circle. So what I do is I put that into the computer here. And I'm just turning it around a wee bit. You'll not be able to see it because the glare. Anyway, this is the software part. This is Lightburn. You have to subscribe to that. It does, the laser does come with its own software. It's uh, it's not very good. Everybody rates this and so do I. This is fantastic once you get the hang of it. It took me a wee while to get the hang of it. Then I'm just in my uh, normal OBS for making recordings and I have my piece here I don't know if you can see it or not but this is what I'm going to burn so the way I started off was I put my size in 110 and then it drew the outline of the circle which is here so there's a wee picture of a wee man on this. Uh, so the grain's going across the way. So you want to line it up as such. Now you want to get, you want to get that in the circle. Make sure it's nice and center. And I will overly purposely uh, do the circle two mils bigger because you can see, you can, uh, if you do it the right size, you can't see the circle. So doing it this way, you can see the outline of the circle right round, and it's more or less uniform. So when you're happy with, you've got this, this piece centered, it's ready to go. So when it's ready to go, you see, I've moved the laser head out of the frame to show you that so I need to bring it home and I just press home on the button on the computer and it comes down to home position it's very important when you start off uh, from the home position that you have it all set up in that particular space it won't do over here it won't do there or it won't do there it's set up in this particular part of the camera or the, the screen. Now my work area is 400 by 430. That's the total of screen. That's the total of size and size square in the box here. And I'm down in the left hand corner. As you can see, that's where the laser is situated. I have loaded my uh, image into the circle on the screen so in theory fingers crossed <laughs> sometimes it doesn't go right uh, <coughs> I haven't tested this I've just done the circle so if it's inside the circle it, it'll uh, it'll uh, laser engrave that into that circle now the, the upside the print size of the engraving it's going to be 90 millimeters so uh, the outline of this is going to be 90 mil by sh clicking the right mouse here on this here this flashes 
and that's the, the bit it's going to engrave. It won't grow, engrave the circle because up here under output, I have turned it off. That was a circle I burnt to get me my uh, diameter for my piece. And uh, so I turned that off. Now we have the image. Now under the speed, it's sitting at 900 and the power setting is 25. Now I'm going to put that up to 30. And the way I do uh, is double click twice and the screen comes up and I can change uh, the power setting. So it's now set at 30. And let's see what else it's on. It's on Jarvis and there's no air assist. I haven't got the air assist uh, connected yet. So I'm happy with that. So I click OK and that's changed it there. So when I'm happy with that, I just put a wee box right around the whole lot and that picks it all and then I go to start and I'm ready to go. I put on the extraction for the fumes and we'll go with that. And there it goes. So that's it starting. Now, I'm not going to show you all this because it'll take too long. Uh, I can get a preview and it says it's going to be 35 minutes. Right, so with, it, with the turning off the piece and a bit of this showing you the engraving of it, it'll, you know, I don't want to make a big long video. So I will let the video run and then I'll do all the editing later on to it. So it's burned away. So I'm going to close this down because it'll fill up a smoke. So now the laser can work away, as you can see through the window, and it's not much to see because it's a blue light, you know. And even with the glasses on, uh, the lights going back and forward, burning the start of my piece. So I'll let that go for a wee while. As it comes to the end, I'll bring you back. There's no point in recording it all because. Uh, and as I said, it's 35 minutes it's going to take that to engrave into that. Uh, it depends on the size of your piece, how long it takes. And I have done a few pieces and then that have taken over an hour. And I'll just show you these couple of pieces here. I've done, I've done. I've done this for my son and his wife for outside their front door. I want to drill a wee hole there and there and then they can screw that outside. And that's a Finley. That's a piece of slate. And I was toying with the idea of giving them uh, place, uh, place mats. These are place mats I bought in BNM. And I, put a, I was going to put uh, their name on them or else a nice picture or something but I changed my mind uh, that was a test piece just of a, a mountain scene uh, that's all that is and see uh, I took most of the stuff back in into the house I didn't want it getting dusty I don't think I have anything sitting out here I have uh, one or two coasters there so Again, we slate coasters uh, with coffee things, uh, logos, and then anybody that's pussy cat and orientated and likes their cats, there's a cat lizard onto that one. So, as I said, you can do anything on to any material except uh, steel. Uh, you need a more powerful laser to do that. This is only a, more or less a hobby uh, 
on the other end. So when I buy the I buy the USB uh, kits, slits, uh, coasters, blank, and then I uh, laser engrave the picture onto it, and then I give it a coat of lacquer. Uh, I'm just looking to see if there's anything hiding on there here that I didn't take into the house. I've took, um, taken most things in the, back into the houses, but uh, I have a couple of wee things over here in the test piece. That was a test picture. I burned that onto a chopping board, uh, a piece of uh, bamboo. This picture here, it has been laser engraved over many times. And you can see in the back, test cuts and stuff. And again, test pieces, there's our Oster wood turning logo. And a few Celtic designs, a wee tree, a bit of Hauteur Laser 2 on that. And, you know, when I first got that, that's what I was doing, sitting with pieces of wood and uh, just getting uh, the run of how it works. Because uh, it does take a wee bit of getting used to. And... Uh, it was a learning curve for me. Uh, there's a great guy on YouTube from Louisiana, and uh, he does tutorials on uh, using the Ortur uh, Master 2 laser and using Lightburn. And he doesn't, he shows you exactly what to do with the, the, the Lightburn software. And uh, the stuff I could do is <laughs> unbelievable. I don't know if the, the, the microphone picked that up there because uh, I had the radio on, forgot all about it. Anyway, there's the piece finished. And it quite, quite very well. So it did. So. Next wee box. American cherry. Uh, with a, a bit of engraving on it. I mean, all right. Have enough of it. That's better. <laughs> I can see is Well, you just can see me. Uh, I was just a wee inside into the uh, laser engraver uh, there's lots more you can do on it and uh, lots lot lots and lots lots of learning <laughs> from me on the software but uh, all in all it's a good uh, good item and uh, I look forward to uh, learning more about it and this is only to fill in roughly for uh, we bit of turning, and you can tell I'm gabbling on again. Uh, I forget when to shut up. So thanks for watching, guys. Okay, good night.